Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's week three of the Eagles training camp at the NovaCare Complex. Hello, everyone. I'm Dave Spadaro along with Chris McPherson. And this is Inside Training Camp presented by Xfinity. The Eagles having their practice on Sunday. Not much to report, Chris. I would say the defense wins the day, right? I would agree with that, yes. It was a very physical day, but not a tackling day, if you get my drift. Well, the thing is, there's really just today's practice, and then they practice on Monday, and then it's really game mode for the first preseason game on Thursday, so you don't want to beat up the players too much at this point. The grind of physicality of camp, it's taking its toll on the players, and this is the time when the players have to fight through, but at least they only have to look at the same teammate for a couple more days. Finally, they can take it to an opponent in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on Thursday night at Lincoln Financial Field. Dave. Yeah, I no doubt that the players are ready to go against different uniforms. For sure, they've been practicing against each other since the spring. It is time for another team to come in. But that's still a couple of days away. The Eagles have practice on Monday. Team is off on Tuesday, Wednesday. The mock game as they prepare for Thursday's preseason opener. Chris mentioned some of the physical toll on this team, so let's get you caught up on the injuries. And the good news, of course, is that nobody is injured for the long term. But let's take a look at the list. Wendell Smallwood, fifth round draft pick from West Virginia. He's been out for a while here, Chris. He is losing some valuable time with that quad injury. It's going to be tough for him to make up for lost time. It was very interesting when I had a chance to ask Doug Peterson exactly what has Smallwood missed during this time. And the thing is, Peterson said, we saw enough in the spring that we feel confident where he can be at, but still, you wanted to see him run between the tackles, pass protect while in pads. So from that standpoint, it's surprising that the Eagles are still showing a lot of confidence in him. Another young player, Ja'Cory Shepard, who last year lost his season to the torn ACL. He's out with a hamstring injury, and that's a setback because Shepard really needs to get on the field in the preseason to win a job. Certainly nothing guaranteed for Shepard with this roster and making a 53-man staff. Now, the, uh, Marcus Smith still out with a concussion. Again, he needs reps. A question whether he'll play on Thursday. And then some veterans with Mike Martin, with Jordan Matthews, Jason Peters, Malcolm Jenkins. We do not know their status for Thursday. But you kind of get the idea that there's no reason to rush them out on the field and take any chances. Typically, the first preseason game, you get the starters out there for a series or two at the absolute most. So you pretty much figure that if they're not going to be able to participate that much, you're not going to want to risk them on the field. You really want to get them ready for those second and third preseason games when you have that extended time for the players on the field. So we mentioned Ja'Cory Shepard. It's a crowded picture at the cornerback position. And the Eagles are looking for some young players to step up. And two who have been in focus throughout this camp, Eric Rose, second-year man who started last year after Nolan Carroll was injured. And then seventh-round draft pick Jalen Mills, who's really shined during these spring and summer drills. Defensive coordinator Jim Schwartz talked about those two players and about what he wants from the cornerbacks in general. You know, what I like about him is he's very competitive. And uh, he comes back. He doesn't shy away from. Uh, he doesn't shy away from contact. Um, he doesn't shy away from matchups. You need that in the corner. Um, you know, if you're on the if you're on the edge, and you're not, and you don't embrace being on that island, you're in the wrong business. And you know, you go around here. I mean, Philly's had great history of some some corners that were on islands that um, you know that embrace that. And I think Jalen has shown signs that he can that he can do those things. He's still he's still young, he's still inconsistent. He's got his ups and his downs, but uh, he comes he comes ready to ready to battle every day. It's going to be about the production of the group. So, you know, out there there's nothing set in stone. Um, you know, there's plenty of jobs to be earned. Um, Eric has done a good job. Eric, Eric has some very good strengths. He's tall, he's hard to throw over top of. Um, he can be physical. Um, I think we've seen that there was a backed up period. He came up, made a big hit on the uh, on the on the flat route, a tight end to the flat route. It might have been a safety. That's what you want to see corners. You don't want to see corners back down from tight ends going to the flat. And you know, Eric's flashed those things. You know, and uh, again, we, we get a little ahead of ourselves with him being a you know too much of a seasoned player. He's got about a half a year or less in starting um, thing. There's still a lot of things he's learning. Jalen Mills is a very interesting story. Talented kid from LSU, dropped to the seventh round in the draft in May. And now he's vying to make this football team, Chris. He appears 
to be on track to make an impact. Yes, a heady player and Jim Schwartz discussed the mindset, the mentality that Mills has. He wants to be out there on the island. He embraces the challenge. And you have to love a player like him because he was a four-year starter at LSU. No small feat in and of itself. And he's coming to camp fearless, embracing all the challenges ahead of him and ready to make a move up the depth chart. And he's been rewarded throughout the spring and even during times in training camp like today when he saw reps with the first team unit. Jim Schwartz said not to read too much into it, but nonetheless, they definitely want to see what Mills can do against the increased competition. Day. And then there's the case of Eric Rowe, who last year started the final month plus of the season. Big, rangy, covers well, physical, and yet in the spring and the summer, kind of lost. Eric Rowe bouncing around in the second team depth chart as they went out to practice in the spring in the OTAs and then the early part of training camp. Then they put the pads on and Eric Rowe has come alive. He's a physical player, must improve at the top of routes. He can run down the field on the go routes, but when receivers change direction, he has a difficult time sticking with his receivers. But still, rangy, good size, has made some progress here in the last week. And Interesting to see where he fits into the hierarchy of the cornerbacks. It looks at this point like it's going to be Leotis McKelvin getting a lot of playing time. It's going to be Ron Brooks getting a lot of playing time. Nolan Carroll's in the mix. And then I think you throw a blanket over everybody and see what happens in the preseason games. Yeah. I was going to say, those three, I would agree, are at the top. You figure Mills and Rowe, probably four and five at this point. Another name, let's throw out there, how about Aaron Grimes? Yep. Cornerback who played in the CFL, was an all-star, won a CFL championship, the Grey Cup last season for them. You know, he's been making plays each and every day, and he's a guy who, you know, came in as a street free agent very early in the offseason, kind of an afterthought, not someone who is expected to challenge for a roster spot, but he makes plays each and every day, and the key for him now is, can he do it in the preseason games when all the fans will be watching and all the other teams will be taking notice and make it so difficult for the Eagles to say, we can't let go of this guy, sort of like Denzel Rice a year ago. But I mentioned Denzel Rice there. You have Randall Evans. You mentioned Ja'Cory Shepard, who's injured. So there's a lot of young guys in that mix there at the cornerback position. You have the three veterans there at the top. After that, though, Dave, it looks like the Eagles are waiting for some of these young guys to kind of take that next step and assert themselves into the roster. And that's why the preseason games are important, and the first one comes up on Thursday night when the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come to Lincoln Financial Field. We've got more to get to here on Inside Training Camp presented by Xfinity. When we return, we're talking quarterbacks. Quarterbacks coach John Filippo in studio. He's talking Sam Bradford, Chase Daniel, and, of course, Carson Wentz. I got tickets, metro tickets. You need a metro ticket, talk to me, please. How do I even know these are real tickets? Uh, you, you know, you just touch it. How do I know they're legit? Is the, this leather legit? I mean, how do we really know? It looks good, right? Is the metro paying you to do this? No, I'm paying myself. I gotta oh, make that profit. Makes more sense. Does the baby need a metro ticket? I'll give her one on me. These tickets, they're not stealing your soul. You can look at them. Man, nobody wants to buy tickets from a guy on the street. I don't understand. I enjoy gardening. I like to plant seeds and watch what grows. Several years ago, I fell, so I went to my local orthopedic doctor who performed a knee replacement. After a year of a lot of pain, I decided I needed a second opinion, so I went to Rothman at Jefferson. As soon as the doctor operated on me, I could tell right away that things were totally different. Now I can garden again, I can kneel, and I'm just very, very grateful for Rothman at Jefferson Hospital. Time to talk quarterbacks with John D. Filippo, the quarterbacks coach here with the Philadelphia Eagles. Thanks, John, for coming in, first of all. Thanks for having me. Um, so from the outside, you know, you read all these stories that this is a difficult situation. How do the Eagles manage these quarterbacks? Wondered from your perspective, now that we're into training camp, deep into it, what's it been like for you? Well, I think it's, it hasn't been as difficult as everybody says. Uh, very early uh, since in our tenure here, Coach Peterson set the you know, set the tone early and, and defined everyone's role. And I think everyone works better when they know what role they have. And it's been a pretty smooth transition here in the training camp. And Sam's been good with it and making strides, and you're pleased with how he's throwing the ball and running the quarterback room and doing all that? Absolutely. Sam, Sam's a pro. I mean, he's been around the block. He's done a lot of things. He's played a lot of football. 
I think everyone would agree, our coaching staff, people, our fans that have been out to practice, that Sam's playing at a very high level. And he set the bar high for the rest of the quarterback room. And, and those are the expectations that we expect from our quarterbacks on a day-to-day -day basis. I think 12 months ago, he was just now able to participate in 11-on-11 workouts. If you were to take video of him throwing then, coming off the surgeries, and now healthy after an offseason, would there be a big difference? Yeah, one, the one difference that I would see is he's getting his, his feet down a lot quicker. I think he's more comfortable planting off his leg, you know, on both legs. Um, you see him from a f physicality standpoint bigger. I think he's weighed more than he's ever weighed since he's been here and, and in his career. I think he's filled out his body. It's the first time in three years he's had a chance to, to train his lower body in an offseason. I think that's huge for any quarterback. And how about from a mental standpoint, John? How's he doing assimilating this offense, checking at the line of scrimmage, doing all the things you look for? Oh, he's doing a fantastic job. And I say, you know, we were nine practices in, nine padded practices in, and, you know, he had his first turnover today. So, I mean, and that's about 100 and you know, almost 200 throws. So, I mean, he's getting the ball on time. He's delivering it accurately. Uh, he's making great decisions and, and doing what we want him to do. All right, we've got Chase Daniel, number two quarterback here. He knows the offense. What are you seeing from him on a daily basis? Chase has been great. He's been great to have in the room. Um, he's been great for a sounding board from – for the other two guys, for the other three guys in our room. And uh, he knows exactly what, what Coach Peterson wants. Uh, he delivers the football. And when Chase plays within himself, he's he's really, really good player. What kind of quarterback is he? I mean, we really haven't seen him. I mean, I, I know he's got the the cerebral part down. Is he a, an athletic guy in the pocket, in and out of the pocket? I think he's much more athletic than people give him credit for. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's not afraid to run the football at all. And I think he's shown that in practice. And, you know, Chase has a lot of really good physical attributes. I mean, people, you look at Chase and he's he's not the biggest guy. But he can drive the football to the perimeter. I mean, he, he's doing a heck of a job, and, and he needs to keep doing a heck of a job. Now you got the number three guy, Carson. Everybody wants to know about Carson yep. on a daily basis. How has he been? He's been awesome. He's, he's been great. He's a, he's, he brings a lot of energy and juice to practice every day. Uh, he's the same guy every day, whether he makes a mistake or has a good day or has a bad day. And that's a, that's a big thing that is underrated when you talk about quarterbacks in the National Football League is guys that are the same every day, want to get better, learn from their mistakes, and continue to try to perform at a high level. What's the ceiling with this guy? I mean, fans watch him and they go, wow, boy, the ball comes out great. And look at that throw and look how mobile he is, and look how big he is. And we kind of want to, we kind of all want to say, what is this guy all about? What could he possibly be? Do you think that way? You know what, we're taking it, what we're trying to do, our approach in the quarterback room is stacking practices back to back to back to back. And once you stack four, five, six, seven practices together and have good practices, then you become, you be able to take the next step. So we're just taking it day by day with Carson and with all our quarterbacks and looking to get better each day. Okay, so you talk about, you know, Doug's talked about working with his eyes, working with his feet. So is he the kind of kid who you tell him once and he gets it better the next time? Yes, he is not what we call a repeat offender. Okay, good. Okay, once, once he makes a mistake, very rarely will you, will he make that same mistake again. The thing that's been a, really a pleasant surprise, not a surprise, but very pleasant to see with Carson is, and I told him this last night actually in our quarterback meeting, is, the, is his ability to be able to retain information from the meeting room to the field. That's a, a very, very positive trait that a lot of young quarterbacks don't have. I mean, they need to see things over and over and over again. And the beauty we have with Carson is he's a very bright person, not only in football, but you know, outside the building too. And that helps him take things from uh, information that we're giving him onto the field. And when he doesn't do well, does he hang his head? No, and we, that's one thing we coach all our quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Body language playing this position is very important. I mean, everyone's looking at you, from fans to coaches to your own teammates. Everybody on the field is always watching you and how you react to certain situations. So when there's a situation that we have a body language fine, like we call it, you know, it's pointed out, it's corrected, and that's not how our, the Philadelphia quarterbacks or Philadelphia Eagles quarterbacks are going to act. John, there's this assumption under the previous offense here that the quarterback had to be very mobile, the read option, get out of the pocket and that there wouldn't be as much movement here. When you watch practice, though, you see quarterbacks rolling out, quarterbacks running. How much mobility is required in this offense? You know, I don't think you need to be a tremendously fast, but I think that you need to be able to change launch points in this offense. And that's the first thing you look for. You never want the quarterback just to be standing eight yards behind the center every time. I mean, the defense is going to just tee off on you then. So we're going to change the launch points of the quarterback. And getting back to the athleticism part of it, you know, I think the beauty of our offense is we have plenty of bullets in our gun to adjust our offense to the strength of our quarterback, whoever happens to be playing at the game at that certain Sunday. So that being said, I think you obviously at the quarterback position, you love to have some athleticism. I think all four of our guys on our football team right now have enough, plenty of athleticism to have success in this offense and to make it run how we want it run. John, what's it been like for you to, to be in this situation to coach 
three players uh, and four, but but two of them, uh, one's a number one pick overall in the draft, one's a number two pick overall in the draft. I mean, there's a lot of talent, experience, youth, kind of got the, everything in that in that pot of quarterback. It's been great. It's been great because number one, all those all those guys are great people and they make it great. So it's been it's a joy to come to practice every day to work with our coaching staff and work with our players and it's it's been an awesome time so far. And for the three quarterbacks, Sam and. Chase and Carson, the reps have been pretty evenly split, yes. split start to finish. Okay. Yep, they've been almost all even. And yep. any sense on Thursday night yet? Do we know how much they're going to play? You know, that's up to coach. That's up to coach. We've talked about it. There's nothing set in stone yet. But, um, you know, that will get, as the week goes on, that will get, you know, that situation will iron itself out. And what do you look for next? What's the next challenge here for those guys going against Tampa Bay's defense? Something not as familiar with what they've seen for the last four months. Sure. I, our goal is to, for all those guys to move, move the ball. Yeah. And that's what we're looking for is for them to move the football and get us first downs and third down conversions. And I think it's that time in camp where I think everyone's ready to play another team and, and you know, quit hitting each other and, yeah. and hit somebody else. No doubt about it. But the, but the quarterbacks, hey, I mean, people who watch it, the, the guys in red are leading the way for the offense. We all can't wait to see it on Thursday night. Me as well. Looking Thanks, forward John. to it. Thanks. John Thanks D. For Filippo. Thanks for coming in studio here on PhiladelphiaEagles.com. Hi, I'm Bo Allen from the Philadelphia Eagles, and this is the Allen from Bob's Discount Furniture. We named it after Bo. Thanks, Bob. You're the man. It packs some serious power. Power recline, power headrest, and USB ports. Get the sofa or console love seat in dark chocolate or light brown, an untouchable value at only $7.99 each. I don't know how you do it, Bob, but man, do I respect it. You know how players show respect after big games? Nope. We swap jerseys. I got tickets, Metro tickets. You need a Metro ticket, talk to me, please. How do I even know these are real tickets? Yeah, you, you know, you just touch it. How do I know they're legit? Is the, this leather legit? I mean, how do we really know? It looks good, right? Is the Metro paying you to do this? No, I'm paying myself. I gotta oh, make that profit. Makes more sense. Does the baby need a Metro ticket? I'll give her one on me. These tickets, they're not stealing your soul. You can look at them. Man, nobody wants to buy tickets from a guy on the street. I don't understand. <laughs> Dave Spadaro, Chris McPherson, back with you inside training camp presented by Xfinity. And Chris, we've only got a couple of days left here before we get to the preseason opener. What is in store tomorrow, Monday, when the Eagles get back on the field? Well, if you somehow missed that one-on-one -on -one with John Filippo, we will have the on-demand full interview available first thing tomorrow morning for you on PhiladelphiaEagles.com and the mobile app. And Filippo was great in the interview, and he's worked some magic with some quarterbacks over the years. Carson yeah. Palmer, Derek Carr. Uh, Josh McCown last year even had one of the best years of his career. Johnny play. Manziel, you wanted to say it. You wanted to say it. I was going to gloss over that yeah. one right there. So hopefully you can work some magic with the guys here in Philadelphia, including quarterback Sam Bradford, who will meet the media for the final time ahead of Thursday's preseason opener. We will stream that live around 11 a.m. here on PhiladelphiaEagles.com. And then our feature, The Journey. The first episode was tremendous following the journeys of Carson Wentz, the first-round pick, and sixth-round pick Blake Countess. Tomorrow it's going to be linebacker Jordan Hicks, third round pick a year ago who was not expected to make an immediate impact and we all saw what he did in his rookie season tremendous until it was cut short by injury and also running back Wendell Smallwood who in some ways could potentially be this year's Jordan Hicks as long as he can get healthy we talked about the injury situation earlier in the show he's someone who you know maybe initially you look at the depth chart not quite a role there but maybe some way he could push for a spot on this football team a spot in terms of he can make an impact for the Eagles in 2016. And last but not least, the preseason opener is Thursday night, 7 p.m. Our live coverage here begins at 6.30 p.m. You'll be able to see this guy on the sidelines on Comcast Sportsnet and Cozy TV. Looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. I love the preseason games. Yes. But I admit that after about three quarters of the game, it'll be different this year because Carson Wentz will be playing. Certainly. I'm ready for the regular season to start. I just think that on Thursday night we're going to get a glimpse very briefly of the starters for this football team, and then it's all about evaluating some of these backup players who the Eagles have a sense of what they're all about, but now they get to go against a different team, and particularly the secondary, the defensive line, the offensive line, and some of these young running backs. How for real are they? 
Uh, we'll find out a little bit on Thursday night. So make sure you tune in to that, Eagles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We thank you for tuning in to Inside Training Camp presented by Xfinity. For Chris McPherson, I'm Dave Spadaro. Have yourselves a great Eagles day.